So in today's screencast, I'm going to show you guys how to chop up a uh, bass line that I'm going to be sampling, and um, you're going to be able to assign that to MIDI notes through drum rack, and you guys can fire those off with a MIDI controller like a keyboard or the MPD32, anything like that, or you can just uh, manually input them in the piano roll window if you'd like, if you don't, if you don't have a MIDI controller. So uh, let's take a listen to the song that I'm working with here, just the beginning of it. So that's the stuff I'm going to be using in the beginning, is uh, all that upright bass playing. So let's drag the audio file into our first clip slot here on this audio track. And Ableton's going to auto warp it for us. And we're going to go to the waveform display down here. And there's all those warp markers. We don't really want those necessarily. So we're going to unwarp the track. And keep in mind that Ableton set a BPM here at 127. That's what Ableton has guessed for the beats per minute of the song. Um, not really super relevant because um, we are going to chop this up and trigger them off ourselves in whatever BPM we'd like. So just keep it in mind though. And I'm going to bring up my waveform display here just a little bit bigger so I can get a better view of it. And uh, this is obviously the first peak here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to drag this uh, start marker here to the first peak. And uh, this is with warp mode off again. That way I have full control over it and uh, I'm going to listen to it one more time just to see a good starting and stopping point for this loop. So I'll find out my parameters of where I should work within. So I think right about here would be a good place to stop. So we'll just sample the notes from the starting point all the way to the end of where I put this loop brace. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to set up our first warp marker here. That's probably a good spot right there. So I'll right click on the start marker and hit warp from here straight. And that's going to bring up our grid uh, with no other added warp markers, just the one in the beginning. That way I can snap the loop brace to the beginning here as well and that loop brace is there at the end of where I want it to be. And now we're just going to start setting up our, uh, our warp markers. And our warp markers are going to be where the chops are going to happen. So let me turn off the grid real quick just so I have full control, which uh, you, you can do that by right clicking on the top part of the waveform here and then just click off where it says fixed grid. And uh, now I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to assign a warp point at the beginning of this hit here. I'm going to just double click to add that warp marker there. So now this will be our first note that's going to be triggered. So on a keyboard if you had like a, a C note or something like that or the C note key then pressing that would trigger just this little snippet here of the sample. And uh, so we're going to set up some more warp markers here on each hit that we see. So I'm going to do it on this one and then we'll do it on this peak right here. And we'll do it on this peak. And finally on this one. And then I'm going to loop it from this point. And we're just going to listen to kind of see visually and also with our ears to find out which, which spots might need an extra loop point or not. So I'm going to stop the main controller up here and hit play here. So I like that little uh, part here, and I kind of want to separate that from everything else. So I'm going to hit play again and kind of find out a good spot to put another warp marker. So I like that spot right there. So I'm going to stop it. I'm going to add another warp marker right at this spot. So now I have individual control over that when I'm going to be triggering it. So that should be good for now for all of our warp points that are going to be assigned to MIDI notes. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click up here. I'm going to stop this again. I'm going to right click up here on uh, this clip and um, I'm going to hit slice to new MIDI track. And once I do that, it's going to bring up this option menu. And I do want it to create one slice per warp marker. And the preset I'm going to use is built in zero velocity. And I'm going to hit OK. And that should assign all those slices that I've assigned with warp markers into drum rack. So um, I'm going to hit a note on my keyboard. So now I'm triggering those off with uh, notes on my keyboard. So I'm going to set the uh, release all the way up here. So that way when I press a note, it's going to play all the way through. That way I don't have to hold the note down in order for it to play through the whole part of the sample. Okay. Um, and we'll drag the attack down as well. That way it starts off with a full force. And the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the, uh, the chain list here. And uh, what's this button right here? And I'm going to bring up our uh, input and output section of our chain list, which is this button down here. And I'm going to set up the chokes. And that means that when I hit one note, if I hit the next one or another one, it's going to kill the last note without letting it ring out. And the way I do that is just by clicking once on the choke section and then hitting one on the keyboard and then hitting enter and just do the same thing for all of them. One, enter. And now that's set up to where the notes are actually canceling each other out there on the, that I'm hitting on the keyboard. So at this point, uh, you're pretty much ready to go, and uh, you can start figuring out what sounds cool, certain parts. Um, I personally like the little uh, section here that kind of goes like this. And uh, you could easily record that as a as some MIDI information. And uh, the way you would do that is just by clicking the little record button here. And I'll stop it. And uh, we're going to open up our MIDI note window here so I can make sure that these are making sense. And uh, so here's the MIDI editor for this track. I'm going to bring these all the way back to the first marker here. I'm going to turn the grid off too by right clicking and just hitting off. That way I have full control over my slices. I'm going to zoom in and make this butt up against here. And I have a drum loop here that I'm going to work with that's at 84 BPM. And so I'm going to set our master uh, or our global tempo here to 84 by clicking once and then just uh, hitting eight, 84 on the keyboard here. And uh, this is going to constrain everything to 84 BPM. Um, I'm going to hit play again on this track right here. So see how that's kind of taking a little bit longer now. If we hit the metronome on, we can hit play again. I want it to land on that 1.3. I think that's going to sound the best. So let's drag this note, zoom in a little bit. Drag it so it falls closer on that 1.3. I'm going to get rid of these two notes here by just highlighting them, hitting delete. And we'll play it back here. I had to drag that back and over, over to the one. So that sounds pretty good for a one bar loop and I'm gonna set that up as a one bar loop by changing the length to one down here and uh, now it's on loop and I'm just gonna hit play and we're gonna that sounds pretty good and I'm just gonna drag in this drum loop here which is already warped uh, looks pretty good with the hits and stuff and I'll delete this track up here. I don't need this. This is just the Ableton sliced version. I'm going to use my version that I played. And we'll get rid of the original audio track by just deleting it, as well as the MIDI track. And then uh, we can play these both together. <laughs> 